Tolbert. He's an instructor of business in the Northeast region. Thank you. Uh, as you know, we're moving from one funding model to another, from FTE to completions. So persistence and completion uh, went up pretty high on my Richter scale. And I started thinking several semesters ago, how, how can I improve the uh, persistence rate among my students? I, my favorite course is Introduction to Business. It's a gatekeeper course in business administration program. And uh, probably some of you have experienced the same thing I have in week four or five. You notice a lot of withdrawals from your classes. And uh, it's not uncommon in that course to see a class of 30 to go down to 25 and then 20 by, uh, by break. And so I was wondering, what can I do to engage students and keep them in the class? After going to a conference on learning communities, I realized that there's a great value in the relational connection between the students. So I created three ways for them to connect with other people in the class. The first one is a study buddy concept. They self-select based on personal postings on discussion board. Another student that they want to have a 16-week relationship with. And they have to sign a contract with that other student, turn it in, and there are about a half a dozen things that they agree to, one of which is to contact each other weekly to make certain that they know what the requirements are for the week, what the due date is for the assignments. A lot of students get bad grades because they just forgot. And so now they have a friendly reminder from someone who's interested. The study group is a group of five students that, again, self-select and then they work together over a 16-week period, uh, either in an in-class environment where we uh, do uh, flashcard exercises, and as their group gets correct answers, they get to leave the class early. These students are highly motivated to get these uh, right answers. So, uh, and then they are, or they may be working on a project together over the entire 16-week period. And then the third component, is a direct connection with me as the instructor. Every week they post a journal and they're requested to do two things. One is to reflect on what you've learned, what's the most important thing you've learned. The other thing, that's about the content. The other thing is how do you feel? So trying to get both sides of the brain engaged. How do you feel about the people in your process, your study buddy, your study group, how do you feel about me as the instructor? And based on their content, I can sort of pick up students that are needing some encouragement. So I drop them a little kudo. I know it's not a, I be advising, but it's direct to them to have a straight line into me. And we talk every week through the journals. And, and these three processes, I started last semester in that class with 30 students, which is typical. I had one withdrawal within the first 10 day period, which is Typical. Uh, what is not typical is that 28 out of, out of the 29 students continued to turn in assignments right through week 16. So I thought that was a, kind of a success, and I'm tweaking it uh, for this semester, but it seems to be a process that's working for me. And our fourth presenter today is Archie Thomas. Archie's instructor of math in the Kokomo region. Okay, I'm going out of clapping because y'all not ready for straight play, so <laughs> I'll make this so short. Uh, I'm a math instructor at IV Tech um, in Kokomo, and I teach uh, Math OAO, which is a co-requisite for Math 118. Uh, the Math 118 instructor is Robin Padgettin, and she and I um, talk with each other, collaborate with each other twice a week. Both of our classes meet twice a, uh, twice a week. Um, I always talk with Robin to see how the lecture, how her lecture went, and uh, based on how her lecture went is how I was uh, I run my class. Um, I use a lot of humor in my class. Uh, we do a lot of collaboration. Um, my lectures are no more than 10 minutes, and I really don't lecture. 
I ask the students uh, what, um, what did they learn out of Robin's class, what needs to be reinforced. And then from there we work on a worksheet. And uh, once we work on the worksheet, um, nobody can use any notes, no one can uh, use their textbook, and they can't ask me any questions. So once we finish with the lecture, it's practical applications. Um, sometimes we'll work in uh, groups, and uh, what we have learned that um, you'll find a lot of leaders in the groups. Sometimes the most quiet people are really the leaders, and it's their opportunity to shine, so we definitely want to facilitate that. Um, the classrooms, my classes are never the same. I have to adapt how the students adapt. Sometimes uh, collaborating works fine, and then other times you find some students are just too dependent, and so sometimes we're working independently. Um, so just based on how the class, um, you know, goes, um, that's how I operate. Um, the students have had their first exam, and uh, no one failed. And I, I have uh, 12 students, and um, uh, my students are they're very apprehensive about math. So for the first day, I uh, tell them all we're going to do is add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and I just keep reminding them of that. So the, after the first test, no one has failed. Uh, we have test number two coming up after the spring break. I have retained all of my students so far, so we're going to see how test two goes. actually comes from my combo to class and personal communication, but it can be used in anything. The idea stems from the idea that my students hate the dreaded Q word, quizzes, right? I wanted to see if they had actually read, but when they said the word quiz, or I said the word quiz, they all cringe, and they get really nervous. So I adapted from another class that I had done. I did a whole survivor theme class a year ago, which is another story. But I took from that into my new class, challenges. So we do challenges instead of quizzes. And they can be anything from very simple challenges to very complex and kind of crazy challenges. But the idea is on the simple end, I give students, oh, I bring in a target. So it's a big Velcro target. And when they walk in, they all throw a ball against the target. I don't tell them why. I record their score. And I give them a five question quiz. And based on how many questions they get right, they earn additional balls for the target. So they throw those balls. I after points, their score is simply what they get on the, on the quiz, so they still get their points. But then the winner of that challenge gets an additional prize, something that I bring into the day, and they really, really want to win the challenge. It's on the very simple end. On the more complex <laughs> end, and again, this, this borders on crazy, but I start them out in groups, and each group gets a worksheet with five definitions of the textbook they read that day. And they have to flip through very quickly and find where the definition is in the textbook, they write down the page number. And they take the page numbers they've collected, and they do a complex math problem using the page numbers. And at that point, they get a three-digit answer. In the front of the room, I have locks. And they have to go to the front of the room and open the lock with their three-digit code. And if it isn't open, it's because they got something wrong. So they run back to their textbook, and they're frantically looking for the right answer as a group. When they finally open their lock, there are letters connected to it. And they have to unscramble those letters to make an additional word that was in the textbook. And the word is equivocation, don't tell. But it's a really long word, and you'd be surprised at how quickly they can actually do it because they come to class having read the textbook. Because it's now positioned as a challenge instead of a quiz, I see them flagging their textbook and talking before class to each other, like, can't you see for this, can't you see for that? actually reading more. So it's been a lot of fun. And you know, I've had some flack for, oh, it's just too much fun, it takes too long. It really can take anywhere from five minutes to 10 or 12 minutes, so it's not that big of a deal. But for me, it's worth the extra few minutes for actually reading the book before they come to class. So if anyone wants copies, I'm happy to send you some of my challenges. Again, they range from the crazy to the very simple. And it's been a lot of fun for me. So with that, we'd like to turn it over to you. And first, we want to do a Q&A and to get any questions you want to ask us to clarify our ideas. And after that, we'll open it up further to see if you have any ideas you can share with us. So are there any questions? I can step down there as well. Do you have for us? <coughs> no questions. OK. I know it's Friday afternoon, but I will say, I don't know if you're like me, but I just want this stuff. I want to hear what people are doing. It helps me in my 
classroom so much. So if you just 15 minutes, you can share some ideas. Does anyone have an idea that you use in their classroom, a brief, quick idea we can sort of borrow for our own classrooms? Thank you. Tell us your name and where you're from, William. My name is Sheila Wise, I'm in the South Bend campus. I teach microbiology, and this semester and last semester, instead of having students write lab reports, I've had them make videos, and it's gone really very well. The students are engaged, and they're actually spending more time helping them in the video than what they were writing a lab report to review the scientific method. Yes.
And so what I do is I take concepts or I take uh, theorists, like, I don't know, Freud might get a bond, but, uh, you know, then I've got Adler maybe against Jung. And then they have to read it ahead of time, and then when they come in, they have to tell them who they think would really win the playoff. I teach in environmental design and I get little slips ahead of time and I make the students an inspector or an expert on one tiny little piece. And so they'll draw something, uh, for instance if we're studying codes or something, they'll draw a little piece and they'll go around and inspect everybody's project to make sure it complies. So in that way they're all kind of learning from each other and it's kind of fun because they, they, they just think that um, they're playing a game and, and going around and, and being an inspector or a detective. In my personal communication class, I'm a really big believer in student-led learning. So what I have them do is, there's a group of students with each chapter, they are responsible for the discussion. They have to come up with discussion questions on the chapter, and then they are responsible for keeping the discussion going during class, which actually really works because everybody in the classroom knows eventually they're going to be the one in the hot seat, and they want to make sure that everybody answers their questions as well, since this is actually part of their grade. And then another group of students are then in charge of the activities that are based on chapter for application. And it can be everything, anything from as simple as a, a Jeopardy type quiz to icebreaker type situations to role plays. So they get more out of it because, again, they're teaching, which was kind of the thing we talked about at the 95% the attention. They're actually teaching something instead of just taking in the information. My name is Agent Michelle Foster, Communication at the Fort Wayne Region. This is not my idea, so I'm going to give credit to where it came from. It was actually from professional development a week ago, but I'm planning it for summer. I went to a presentation, someone who teaches uh, business law, and one of the complaints was that students' writing is not up to speed. So he wanted to integrate creative writing in, and I thought it was brilliant. What he did is for each chapter, he set up a scenario. Um, he called it Jim, you know, Jim has to create a nonprofit, so whatever. And it, the first one was actually titled Jim Wakes Up in Jail. <laughs> and then he goes from there, and then for each chapter, students work in groups, but they actually write a story. And he set it up as a chapter book throughout the semester. So I'm planning on using that in the comm classes by giving them a Bill has to give a speech. Chapter 13, delivery, uh, one group has to have Bill succeed, one group has to have him fail, what did he use from the chapter that was good, why did Bill in the other version fail, what didn't he do? And I think it's easily adaptable for any program. to have a run of communication people here. Jeffrey Lawrence, Associate Professor of Communication from Franklin. One of the uh, things that the college has emphasized over the last few years was doing service learning and incorporating that. Um, we've done this in a couple different ways. In the uh, public speaking course, the 101 course, we've uh, had them go out and volunteer for two hours, actually set aside a class day, do teams typically of three or four, and have them pick an organization, and then volunteer at it, and then provide a team speech about that organization and their experience. So they're getting kind of from both sides. They get to go out, they get to work in a team, they get to, you know, outside of the classroom environment, but then come back and tell us about it in the traditional speech format. We start off doing this for one class, then we expand it, and now we're doing it for all the face-to-face one-on-ones, and now we've incorporated the common one-on-two as well, um, just variations of that. But uh, initially, students are kind of resistant about it, but then when they go out and actually do the teamwork together and come back and talk about it, they usually have a really great time. I'm 
real name of Gary Spike. I teach welding at South Bend, cuts and burns. Um, when my students uh, are beginners and they're showing me their welds, I uh, teach them to evaluate what they're doing themselves. I, they'll, they'll show me a weld they've done. I want them to say, okay, what do you see? Do you see any defects? What created this defect? What can you do to fix it? Okay, we've been working on trying to fix this defect a few times now. What do you think you can try differently? But I want them to be able to do that evaluation on their own because I cannot follow them into the field. Um, but sitting here listening to the panel, uh, somebody suggested they're doing this, they have the students do presentations. I think I'm going to try that with my beginners next fall. Um, and I thought, what do I get out of that? Well, what are the students going to get out of that? What do I want to see? I want them to see that everyone has a different style, that everyone has a different skill set, not just a different skill level. Um, but they also, I encourage them to learn from each other. Let's help out a lot. Thank you. Thank you.